<coughs> Hello. <coughs> Hello. My name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our lesson number 58. Day 58. Let's see. Let's start with the let's start our day with uh, this word here. Wrap or Le repertoire. What's the repertoire? A repertoire uh, of an art of, of somebody, usually an artist, is the range of things that the artist can do. The song he or she can play, uh, the roles he can play in a, in, in, a, in, in, a, in a musical or in opera or any kind of uh, all the things that uh, one, one is able to do. That's called the range of things that you can do or the different songs, the list of different songs that you can sing. Those, that's called your repertoire. It's a range, range or list of songs, plays, operas, performances, roles, etc. that an actor is able to perform. I think I need to change the marker. This thing is for some strange reason it's not not very dark. And it's, it's pronounced repertoire. Again, range or list of songs or plays or operas or performances or roles whatever it is that the actors can do, the, the list of the whole thing, the whatever the actor is able to do, is called his or her repertoire. Range of skills or aptitude of a person. So if somebody says to someone, well you have an impressive ap uh, repertoire, that means you can do a lot. I'm impressed by all the different things that you're capable of doing. Just give me one second. I have to, just one second. I'll be right back. I'm still here. So the word was repertoire. The next word that I want to cover, there are three or four, or actually a few words here that we are going to cover today. And they were, these words have nothing to do with each other. Sometimes I have certain themes where I go and there are words are related in some certain way and they have a certain uh, theme to it. Today all the words are, 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 are completely unrelated. So that was it. One more time, the word was repertoire. Range of skills or aptitude of a person. All of these words, as I told you before, if you have watched other videos in the last 57 days, all of these words I have collected over the years, which I wanted to learn myself properly, and that's what I'm doing right now. The next word that we want to learn is condone. What does it mean to condone? It means to forgive a wrongdoing. If you do something wrong and the person forgives you, the person has just condoned you. 
to overlook a wrong way to excuse a wrong way to pardon a wrong way and finally and finally condone means to refrain from showing disapproval. If someone does something wrong, something bad, and you withhold your disapproval, you do not show your disapproval to the person, uh, you're not necessarily excusing them, you're not necessarily uh, pardoning them, but you're not uh, showing your disapproval formally, that is also called condoning it. Let's learn it about refrain. That's the next word I have in the list, which is why it's in the capital. It has two meanings, which is why I want to cover it. To refrain from doing something means to not to do that, to, to, to keep yourself from doing something, to restrain yourself, to, to, hold, you, to hold yourself be, back. Uh, but it has one more meaning, which is why I want to cover it. So that's the next word. The word was condone. So if someone says we do not condone such behavior, what they're saying is that we do not tolerate such behavior, we do not excuse such behavior, we do not pardon such behavior on, this, on these premises. We do not condone such language, we do not condone such behavior, we do not condone such manners. Uh, we, don't, we don't put up with it, we don't, we, don't, we don't approve of it. The next word is Refrain. Re. Refrain. It has two meanings. As a verb, as a verb, it means exactly what we just said: to hold oneself back. I don't know why I needed a hyphen there. to restrain oneself for example if somebody uh, someone might tell you to refrain from swearing to refrain from swearing what they're telling you is that uh, do not swear to, to control yourself to restrain yourself do not swear uh, refrain from swearing Please refrain from smoking, which means to hold yourself, to, be, to hold yourself back, to restrain yourself from lighting up a cigarette. Please refrain from smoking, to hold back, to, to restrain yourself. What does it mean as a noun? As a noun, refrain is an entirely different word. A refrain, a refrain is a phrase. Or a words repeated at intervals throughout a song or a poem. If you listen to a song, most songs have this one line that the uh, artist keeps repeating at the end of each verse, at the end of each stanza, at the end of, that's a verse. I don't know if you can read my handwriting. V E R At the end of each verse, at the end of each stanza, at the end of each part of the song, they repeat certain theme, certain line, over and over again in the song, which actually, depending on how they do it, can become very catchy. And that's how the songs become famous. And that uh, line that they repeat throughout the song or throughout the poem, the same line keeps appearing at the end of each stanza, at the end of each verse. That repeated line is called a 
refrain. A uh, refrain is a noun. So again, it has two meanings. One is to one is to refrain, which means to hold yourself back from doing something, to control yourself. Oh, there we go. To hold yourself back from doing something. To hold your to hold oneself back. from doing something to restrain oneself to control oneself refrain to control oneself from doing something please refrain from smoking refrain from swearing do not swear control yourself Let's move on then. The next word that we want to learn is, again as I said, they have nothing to do with each other. These are, these are four or five completely separate unrelated words. So I need to erase everything. A lot of the famous songs have this refrain that everybody knows and that's how the songs become famous as I said. The next word we want to learn is myopia. Oh, I mispronounced it just now, didn't I? It's myopia. Myopia. It's not pronounced myopia like I just did. Myopia. Which is why I always put the which is why I always put the pronunciation. To help us remind uh, ourselves uh, as to what the pronunciation should be because like I said you cannot go by how the thing is written which is why I always put down the pronunciation myopia is a disease is a disease of the eyes it makes you it makes it difficult to see the distant object and if you are unable to see the distance object that disease is called short-sightedness short-sightedness and that's called myopia You will see exactly where I am going with this in a second. Having difficulty seeing distance object, distant objects, or Short sightedness, short sightedness, short sightedness. Short sightedness, and from the word myopia, which is a disease, and that's the literal meaning of the word, from the word myopia we have derived a metaphorical meaning. If someone is said to be myopic, if someone is said to be myopic, that person is unable to plan ahead. Unable to think of distant future not distance but rather distant future only thinking of near future let me give you an example of how the word might be used uh, myopic in the context. The Americans and the European firms are sometimes accused of being myopic uh, in their outlook for their, for their firms, for their companies, because they are said to worry only about the dividends that they are going to declare 
in the next at the end of the next quarter they have a very myopic view they're only worried about what's going to happen to the dividends that they're going to declare in the next quarter as opposed to Japanese who are who have this uh, reputation of uh, being able to plan far future far far ahead in future they think of 5, 10, 20, 30 years sometimes ahead of times in the future as to where they want to be. They're not worried about what the dividends are going to be next. What they're not worried about what the dividends are going to be in the, in the next quarter. They do not have myopic view. They do not have myopic uh, outlook. That's how it's used. So if you're myopic, you are very short-sighted. Not in the literal sense of the word, but in the metaphorical sense of the word, in the sense that you are incapable of planning for future, for, for distant future. You can only think about perhaps the next month or the next year, but uh, you have no plan as to what's going to happen 10, 20, 30 years down the road. And if that's the case, the person is said to be myopic. That was the end of the lesson for today. I will see you tomorrow on day number 59 with some more interesting words. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, either face-to-face -face tutoring or tutoring over the internet via Skype for GRE, GMAT, SAT or TOEFL or even algebra, geometry, calculus, statistics, you can go to any of these website addresses that you see there and you can send me an email uh, describing as to what you need help in. Or you can go to simply keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.